Welcome to Streets, Sports, and Success with your host, Simon and Maurice. Let's go. Let's go. What's up, gang? Welcome to another episode of Street Sports and Success with Simon and Maurice. And we're going to pull a switch up on what we were going to talk about because I see Maurice over there with a big old jug of water. I got some dark green juice, some yellow nasty juice. This is the stuff I really got to force down mentally down my throat. And then I got some BCAs over here. So in this yellow juice that look crazy yeah this is this got uh some some turmeric in it uh or turmeric however you pronounce it with some uh ginger some cayenne pepper and some water uh this is just all types of of uh great greens uh mixed up in it uh not those things and then what these is the function what, what is the function of uh turmeric because i see a lot of people take pills and it's yeah, emotions they, and all that. What is the function of it? They they say uh, there's a, numerous health benefits, but I think one of the big ones is it's supposed to bring down inflammation in your body, uh, mm. which, you know, when you research that, inflammation in your body not only causes, you know, disease. aches and pains and stuff, but that's where a lot of disease comes from. <laughs> and so it's supposed to help you fight, you know, fight disease. I literally c can feel a difference in my energy levels, I feel like, when I'm when I'm doing this stuff, you know, there's five days a week. I'm digging into the, to the, to the juices and stuff like that. I noticed you got that big old thing, uh, thing of water. The solo cup. Yep. <laughs> that big old extra large solo cup. That, yeah. That, that don't look like a normal size solo cup. Look like it's about a foot long. Yeah. I, I, I'm not sure where this, uh, came from, but I, I grabbed it. You know, this one of them insulated cups. So thank God for that. So I think, you know, we, we could open up and just start talking about the importance of nutrition, uh, exercise, and fitness, in, and how that, you know, correlates with success in, in business and in life. And, you know, I know both of us share the same feeling of getting up early. You know, both of us get up early. Both of us like to start grinding and, and working out early in the morning. Um, is that something that you're still doing, and, and what does that routine look like, and, and why do you feel, uh, if that is still what you're doing, why do you feel like that is important to starting your day off that way? Uh, I think it's, uh, you know, I, I've said it on, on numerous occasions, and I've and I said on the internet all the time that uh, I don't think that wellness uh, is, um, is, a, is a normal conversation in our daily society. And um, in order for me to be well, in order for me to be centered, or just in order for me to uh, get kicked off to the right to the right space of the day, uh, I, I use the morning to kind of set my energy. And uh, my day typically looks like, you know, on average, you know, sometimes I'm up at 4.30, sometimes I'm up at 5.30, but on average, it's, it's about 5 o'clock. And I get downstairs uh, in my basement, you know, I come to a little quiet place where I have my, uh, my dry erase boards. Uh, I got a, a small habit in, around me. You'll see I keep notepads where I'm writing my goals down or I'm constantly uh, putting in front of me what I'm doing and, and where I want my energy to go. Uh, I, I do a practice of every day of trying to tell myself, you know, when I have uh, this podcast that I have to do later on, I want my energy to feel like this. And just like, you know, when we played football, they used to say you got to visualize the game. You got to visualize, you know, what you want to do inside the moment and, and see yourself having success. And I think that same thing still correlates to life. And so, you know, after that, you know, uh, of me, you know, give my little personal affirmations and beliefs, you know, I get to the gym, you know, I'm sitting in silence, but by the time I get to the gym, you know, 10, 15 minutes into the process, my, my body, my energy and, and everything about my being is up, you know? And so there I, I'm able to cruise into the day. I'm able to cruise into the workout. And, um, when it's time to send emails out, my tone or my energy is a lot better. You know, and you've been there before when, you know, say you get a phone call, a text message, or an email at the end of the day, you're a lot more uh, shorter and to the point than on the front side of the day where you can think about, okay, how, may, how will this affect the person? You know, am I saying this the right way? You know, am I including the right people on the thread? You know, am I, am I being most effective with communicating this message? And, you know, when you're, when, you're, when you're in a great place in a great space of energy, you know, a lot of that stuff is there. And, and then uh, I always talk about 
having the ability to push your program on the front side of the day. And when you're pushing emails, when you're pushing calls, when you're pushing text messages, you are the one driving the day. And, and we're both in a similar situation. When you're leading groups of people, somebody has to be driving the, uh, of the boat or the mission or setting the standard and, and making sure that you're in a great place of wellness is, is highly important. It's just my, my personal deal. And I don't know if you, your day varies uh, rather much, but uh, and, and I want to I want to preface this by saying I've not, I, I've never created this program, you know, but I've studied people who have been very successful. And I remember one of the first people I read uh, it was about Benjamin Franklin. You know, he's talking about getting up at three in the morning and throughout the day he would document his success on things that he did well things that he needed to recorrect and he just kind of repeated the process. And so when you just go back of people who've uh, accomplished great or or that are notable, uh, one of the main things is that they know once the work day starts, they are really uh, taken by responsibility. The responsibilities of the day kind of take the time. And so in order to um, get ahead, so to speak, they need to stack their mornings and, and, and compound those three, maybe four or five hours with themselves over the year, and that's how they get ahead. And um, but but it's, it's it's within those hours that nobody really wants to work in, that everybody rather sleep and and be comfortable. That really separates people. And you know, a lot of people talk about you know how how does a person accomplish more? Uh, and, and really, it's those compounded hours, those three, four, five hours over years. It's not going to happen in the summer, but it's those four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years where. I've learned more. I've spent more time with myself. I've spent more time with my attitude. I've spent more time uh, just gathering myself in general. And and those are the leaps and bounds that people don't see uh, where, where maybe I've, um, I've thought through uh, more things more times than you. You know what I'm saying? Or I've thought more angles on a situation. And, and sometimes uh, that stuff is not validated in school, so people don't really find a whole bunch of value in it. But the, the more you have the ability to think about your plan, analyze your plan, critique your plan, and push you forward, the better. But that time is in those early morning hours. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm a huge believer in this. I, I, I think it changed my life. Um, I've noticed, you know, out of 365 days in a year, you know, maybe there's a handful of days where I'm not up early in the morning. I'm not doing my routine for whatever reason that day. And I've noticed the difference in the way that the rest of the day goes. The, the rest of the day flows differently. And I think, you know, the, the more impact you're going to have on other people, the more success that you're going to have, uh, the more people that are going to be pulling at you and the busier that you're going to be. And so I think what people make the mistake of doing is they neglect themselves. They, they don't take care of themselves because they say, you know, when I hear people say, man, I can't do that stuff because I'm too busy. You know, I just can't find the time. You know, they, they, you ever hear people say, man, if you want something done, give it to the busiest person. It's, it's yes. like, man, I could think of all the things that I have that are busy, all the things that I know that you do that are extremely busy and others, and they find a way to get it done. And then others that are not maybe as busy say they don't have time. And that's why they don't, you know, they don't do it. I, I wish that everybody would buy into this, especially the people that, you know, that, that I'm in business with, because I know that it would change their life. You know, I, I think no. that, go ahead. No, even when you said, I wanted to like, even like sometimes when people talk, I love wanting to break stuff down. Uh, and when I, when I think the biggest thing is just the busiest people understand how to structure time and they understand how to work within five to 15 minute increments. And I think that's why they say that. And I think that when you're, um, when you're a highly organized person and an early starter and you understand the value of time, then you understand my life can be um, structured in 15 to 30 minute increments. You know what I'm saying? And I don't want to say that that's, um, that, that, that's the what holy do you, What do you mean by that? What, what do you mean structured in 15 to 30 minute increments? Um, well, my, my day for the most part with everything I do is structured 15, 30 hour minute increments where I'm saying, okay, I'm giving, I'm giving two hours of this my time to this. You know what I'm saying? And then after this is done, that's done, I'm on to the next thing. You know what I'm saying? And then after this next thing is done for a half hour, that thing is done. You do the next thing, right? Uh, I think if you just took, uh, if you just took about, you know, people who have success versus people who don't, and I'm talking about uh, an acceleration in career, an acceleration in promotion, an acceleration in finances, or just, um, just organized happiness. You know what I'm saying? It's people who work within 
who work in scheduled time, you know what I'm saying? Yep. And and how they spend their time is intentional. And I think that that is uh, one of the greatest separators, you know what I'm saying? And I think like, uh, under, but, I, but I think also that accelerates learning, you know what I'm saying? When, when you start to be intentional with how you spend your time and you start to realize well, what you're trying to do, you start to say, okay, you know, maybe I, I need to learn a little bit more so my time spent in these 15 to 20 minute increments can be done better. And I just found out there's a lot of things like once you start to structure your time, there's a lot of habits that coincide with you moving forward uh, to, to some degree. And, and 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 these are like I said, these are things that are not traditionally taught in school settings or in, in college settings or whatever you want to call it. But I think these are things that have significant value. And if you talk, I'm telling you, even if you talk to um even if you talk to the man who's been running a small business in your neighborhood for the past, you know, 30 years, 15 years, 20 years, right? I can guarantee you just from him being self-sufficient that he would say his time is structured with how he move or how he does his time. I mean, how, how he operates his day. But that's just my that's my, my little two cents on structure. Yeah, like sports, time. you know, like sports. You know, you don't go into the game. If the game starts at 1 o'clock, you know, you're playing at Ohio State. We got a noon kickoff. I'm pretty sure – Cats ain't just waking up at eleven o'clock to be to start the game at twelve. You know what I'm saying? But that's what people do in business. You know what I'm saying? They supposed to be there at nine, they get up at eight and just start playing the game. Your whole first half gonna suck. You know what I mean? So I, I I've I, I think you need to approach life as a game. And so what time does your game start? You know, I, I think the world's game starts by nine. You know, yeah. eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock kickoff. And so at that point, I got people running down at me on special teams. I'm, 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 I'm fielding the kickoff. I got people firing off at me. I got coaches screaming stuff. I got players screaming stuff. I got people getting injured on the field. I got all these things happening. <laughs> I, I got to make sure that I'm prepared for that moment because I can't worry about warming myself up getting myself ready to play, going through my my, my checks and, and, and plays when the game already started. And so, you know, for me, game starts at 8 or 9. That's why I'm up at 5. That's probably why you're up at 5, is we're warming. If I could make an example, is we're warming ourselves up, taking care of ourselves in order to play better in the game, in order to coach better in that game. Because by the time – Eight, nine o'clock hits. If you running stuff, business is firing, people are pulling you in a, in a million directions, things are, things are happening. Not only will you not have the time to take care of yourself, but you'll deal with these problems, issues, because if you, if you have a business, then you, got, then you got problems. If you're dealing with a lot of people, you're going to deal with a lot of problems. And so by the time the problems start happening, you haven't properly served yourself to be able to better handle those problems with less stress, less angst, anxiety, less less aggressiveness, you know, more focus and intention um, it, because you've warmed your mind up. And so for me, you know, I live by mind, body, spirit, you know, so in the morning I run through touching all three of those things every morning. Even if sometimes I can't touch spirit for 45 minutes, I'm touching it. You know, I'm, I'm throwing a prayer up. I'm reading the scripture. I'm listening. I'm listening to somebody uh, that I follow on on a YouTube. I'm I'm doing something to get my spirit in the right place. And so that's like warming the body temperature up before you play a game. Then I'm getting my mind right. I'm pouring into myself. So I feel like I'm not good enough to serve everybody else five years from today with the information that I currently have right now. Plus, we're hardwired that anything that you don't use, you lose. You're either getting better or you're getting worse. You hear that in sports all the time. You're getting better, you're getting worse. There's no staying the same. And so if I'm not reviewing the leadership stuff and the business things that I've already learned, then those skills are going to fall off. That mindset is going to fall off. I think people think, well, I got leadership down or I got things down. You know, they don't need to pour into their mind anymore that they got it all figured out. And I think that... If you're going to serve other people, you got to serve yourself. So you got to pour into that mind, pour into that that spirit, and pour into your body. And then when you have a family, I people that are busy that have a family, it blows my mind if they're that busy, how they can work out in the afternoon, you know, at five o'clock or six <laughs> o'clock or when LA Fitness is open. You know what I mean? Because it's like, man, if I'm that, I don't I don't have time to give. 
two hours no. in, in at the end of the day. Evening. If I've already been missed time with my wife and missed time with my kids, I'm trying to get home and, and, and give them that time. And so when they're sleeping, you know, I don't know about you, but I know my kids and family don't really, they ain't up and at them really till 7 30 8 o'clock nah, same here so if, people. if i'm banging you know five to eight is my time i ain't missing nothing from nobody nah. that's me taking care of myself so i could take care of 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 other people so we set the stage on why we do those things why we start out you know early in the morning why don't we talk a little bit about the the how you know what what are you trying to do with uh your nutrition game uh, how have you played with some of those different forms of, of nutrition? Where has your body felt the best at? And what would you suggest to others and how it impacts their life from a, a food and nutrition standpoint? Yeah, so, so my stuff is a little bit different. Um, I think like I go in, in spurts and, and that's a place where I'm a little bit uh, inconsistent, right? Because uh, everybody feels like they have a place where they let go, where they have pleasure, where you know they, they feel like they need to reward themselves. And for forever, I said I, I never um, comp com compromise with food, right? If I, like it's hard for me to turn down, it's hard, it's, it's easy for me to turn down bad food like McDonald's, Burger King, like junk food. But it's hard for me to turn down good food, like a good restaurant and and, and just good delicious food at different uh, locations. But what's your what's your time, what's your vice? What's what's the stuff for you that that uh that gets you that you got to fight off, or if, if you get a cheat meal, you firing at sushi. Sushi's bad for All right, me. That ain't too bad. That ain't too <laughs> I, bad. I like this, the, the amount of sushi I eat is too is bad. <laughs> all the all the rice and all the carbs. Yeah, all the all the carbs. And so I, I, I go and I, I I probably eat about like ten rolls. You know what I'm saying? Just like okay. ungodly stuff. So sushi's bad for me. Uh, Thai food is bad for me. Uh, Eddie Merlot's is right by the house, so going to Eddie Merlot's too much that is that's bad for Love me. Eddie you know, Merlo's. cheesecake factor. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. Like you know, I, I got I got a few restaurants that I, I like, but but they're not nutritionally good for me. But when, when I'm when I'm in the zone or when I'm in the mode, you know what and, mine is. Uh, what's up? You know they just robbed the handles over there on the south side. Yeah, they, they shut it down. They like, shut it down. <laughs> I mean that that was there forever, man. I'll, yeah, but handles is my that's that's my thing. That, that's the vice. Oh man, I gotta admit to you, you know I'm 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 probably ninety percent. I eat pretty clean and uh you know every once in a while I'll tr I'll treat myself man the other day we had an event we had uh our executive council I took everybody to the late club mm -hmm. and uh outside of Youngstown you know for people that are listening this is a, a, a golf very nice golf course country club and uh yeah. outside of Youngstown so I want to bring some business to the to the area so I brought my executive council for two companies there the recruiting company KO and the uh, in, in our you know the insurance game and so we brought that there and i went to the magic tree which uh dude that i grew up with on the east side uh john, john rudy it's it's a restaurant uh next to handles over there in boardman oh, I right, don't know. yeah right next to uh you know where the cinema south is at mm -hmm. the uh mr anthony's right across right across from there and so my dude owns it we grew up he grew up right around the corner uh from me on the east side uh mom and dad still live on the east side over there off clay street and uh so i said i'm gonna bring him some some business and and, and uh and support him so when i left there last second man i'm telling myself i'm not gonna go to handles i'm not gonna do it okay i'm I, I just please just hang in there i've been eating clean i had about four or five days streak eating clean and and they called me i, I a couple of the people called me i was asking where they was at they called me they was at handles and I'm telling you, we was driving past it. We was driving past it, man. And I had perm driving. And I'm like, I'm like, go ahead, pull in there, perm. Go ahead and hit that left. Hit that left, man. I I, I folded and I and I had some uh, some Oreo cookie ice cream from Handles. So that yeah. that's my vice. The the uh, ice cream specifically Handles ice cream and uh, pizza. Those are my those are my two obstacles. Yep. Yeah, pizza doesn't get me. It's just so like, like so. But but I feel like the average person who hears this can understand me that they know uh, when the nutrition is in line and, and when they're eating better, the energy's better, right? And that's the, that's the biggest thing that I feel like. Can you, you know, feel it in your body? Can you feel your uh, energy levels in the way that you like, move? I, I can tell you when I'm eating clean, like you know, when, when I say clean, I'm talking about natural whole foods, right? 
And so they, they got a grocery store down here in Columbus called Fresh Time, and they got Whole Foods, right? And when I'm eating, like, real foods, whole foods, and I don't stack my uh, diet with carbs and sugars and things of that nature, and it's just natural fruits and natural, uh, or if I'm eating fish and uh, nothing's fried or bread or none of that nonsense, and I'm eating vegetables and, and there's no, nothing but salt and pepper inside of them, man, I can just feel like my, my stomach feels better, my body feels better, my energy feels better. Uh, my attitude is better. Um, and then just like most times, and, and this is this is where I get bad at, I associate events with food, right? So if I'm watching a football game, I'm not thinking about eating a piece of salmon and spinach. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about eating chicken wings yes. and, and, and and chips and dip and all the stuff yes. you ain't supposed to have. Or if the summertime comes, I'm thinking about the grill and you think about hamburgers and, and, the, and hot dogs and all that nonsense. And so that may be like my... Um, like a, a, a bad part of the diet, but you know, I, I tell you one thing that happened last night, right? So my daughter was encouraging me, right? I said, out of all things, you inspired me. So about a month ago, she said she's going to be a vegetarian. And in the back of my head, I said, you're fucking right. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see a kid there try to is. be like a vegetarian, right? And so literally, she's been a, a vegetarian, like no meats and, and no fish and no anything. And as it went on, I said, damn, does my daughter have more discipline than me? You know what I'm saying? Uh, in regards to food, because, you know, food is one of the um, one of the hardest it, it, parts it might, of discipline. I, I guarantee you food may be the most complex thing to discipline yourself with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I, don't, I don't care out of, out of everything else to be able to discipline what you put in your mouth every day at all times of the day. Uh, knowing that you need it for energy and knowing how many outlets you have for, you know, to grab nasty food, that made it be, be the biggest thing. And for her to do it, she walked in the kitchen and uh, she was making one of those uh, Beyond Meat burgers, right? And so she was putting it together and uh, she made it like look all cool with lettuce and tomatoes. And I was like, man, I was like, this is serious. But I said, I see how this can benefit her in her life long term. Oh, man. And so I started thinking to myself, I said, man, you know, who are you to be the parent? And to be having a child school you in regards to eat you cleaner, eat healthier. You can't help yourself. Yeah, nah, even with my daughter, right? <laughs> yeah, so it was cool, man. It, it was cool to um, just have that experience, to, to see her experience that and to be inspired by it. Uh, but, man, like most people who are hearing this, and I, I do want to say this, shout out to the people um, who've picked up and start to listen, you know, because now I'm starting to get direct messages. And now I was at the gym the other day, and uh, if the guy sees me, you know, he'll, he'll probably say he listened to this, but he walked up to me while I was on uh, the bench press, and he was like, man, I listen to you and Simon uh, every week. And so it was surprising to me because I was thinking, like, I didn't know what he's going to say, but I didn't expect to hear that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, uh, but shout out to the people like that. And so, you know, even when you're on these platforms, I think it's good to be realistic and, and then I say, like, hey, I'm this guy who eats perfect, and you eat a lot more healthier than I do. Uh, but, I, but I will say, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, when I do decide to eat healthy, there's a notable difference. But like everything else, just how just how I had to start somewhere with the early morning wake up. I, 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 I think people think that they're more tired than they are because of the diet. You know, so when, 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 when I'm running, I'm always reminding cats, you know, I'll be running with somebody 20, 25 years old. I'm 36 years old. And if I'm on a road trip visiting offices and they're next to me and we entertain at night and i'm up early in the morning i'm rolling with them in the car come noon one two o'clock i start seeing them yawning and i'm always like look man i'm like you see you know i got 15 years on you you know i got 10 years on you and 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 i know that a big difference is i'm hydrated i got a bunch of water in me i got the right foods in me and so I think sometimes people think that they're more tired, that they need more sleep, and it's probably more that you need the right nutrition. If I'm grinding hard for three, four days, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do five hour, uh, five hours of sleep often. I don't want four hours, five hours of sleep. But sometimes my schedule calls for I have to do four or five hours of sleep. Mm -hmm. and, and so this happens every couple weeks. I got I to gotta go a couple days where, where I'm probably running on five. And I'm still getting up with that, with that energy. And the reason I'm able to do that, I know, is because of this. Eating clean, juicing, you know, eating the right foods. And 
it really started to, to stick out to me when, you know, I wrote my goals down for my family to start this year off and with Natalie. And one of the things is we wanted to, to, to have a day where family would, would get together. We would get our families together and stuff like that. And it seemed like a lot of times when the family was coming over, I was exhausted. I was on the couch just like passed out. It wasn't my goal, but they would come over and I would, I would be asleep. You know what I mean? One, two o'clock. And it was because of what you were talking about. It was football season. It was Sunday. And I'm like, I got to get it in because all week I'm eating clean. So I'm banging out pizza, four pieces. You know, I got wings, you know, about 10, 15 wings in me. And before you know it, I got the itis. Can I say that on camera? And, and, and so I'm, I'm, I'm passed out. And next thing I know, everybody's leaving. You know what I mean? And, and it wasn't sleep. It was the food. You know what I mean? So it's, it's I, the sugar level. It's the sugar level. So I just want to let, you know, you guys, I want to encourage you out there. If you haven't learned about what foods can do to your energy levels and your health, I would encourage you to put a little bit of time into it, especially in the, in the information age where everything is at our thumbs with Google and iPhone, iPhones. I mean, if, if you spend... Just half the time that you spend on social media this week, you'll damn near be an expert. You'll understand a lot of what it's going to take for you to live a healthier life and have more energy from uh, a nutrition standpoint. I'll say this, you know, you know, this is just a small, like a small, obvious deal that works. The times that I'm eating healthy are the times when I prepare my food in advance. The times that I'm not eating healthy is the times when I don't um, prepare my food in advance. And it all comes down to this, right? If I, because I, you know, I grab those little uh, black boxes. Where everybody has them, little black and clear containers that you get from Amazon, and yep. you prepare your food, make them, and so on and so forth. I guarantee you, every single time I've done that, I've come down in weight. I look better. My skin looks better. My body feels better. And it just comes down to Sunday, prepare the food, throw it in the refrigerator. When it's time for me to go throughout the day, put them in my little sack, heat the stuff up. You on off to your business. When I'm hungry and I'm moving around and it's an impulse buy, I go to Chick-fil-A, I go to Penn Station, I go to all the stores that you're not supposed to go to, and really it's an impulse decision on what I want to eat, and typically it's, it's, it's out of line with what I should be doing. So just like anything else, man, it's just preparation, but the, the preparation on the front side, be it food or be it with exercise, is literally the discipline you need to take everything to the next level. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. And so, like, like, and, and I know people have heard this before, but success has a lot of responsibility. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, there's a shit ton of people who want to be in charge or who want to, like, lead the pack or they want to um, um, mimic or experience the success of other people, be it with their physical or be it with their financial lives. And... What, what, what people don't want to do is just have the extreme level of discipline, uh, be it with preparing food or be it with reading books, you know, all, all the tedious stuff. The tedious stuff, bro, when separates people, but no that's where that's where the work is at. Dog, you know I can't where, get over. You know, people will pay me thousands of dollars for consulting for a couple hours a month. And the first part that I start out talking to them about probably don't get executed by 80% of the people. So the first place that I'm starting is this, what we're talking about, getting yourself right with what you eat, your exercise routine, the books and audio books and podcasts that you expose yourself to. And regardless of your religious beliefs, getting some form of spiritual growth, uh, stretching, done per se uh in in your in your routine and how that impact I, I, man I, I wish i could show people from a, a monetization standpoint what this will do for their life and their relationships if they were to take care of themselves first thing in the morning and i think what everybody does is they try to look at that outcast and say well this person does it and they're successful but they don't do any of these things and I think you could find that anywhere, you know, so, so what, what do I mean by that? You know, there, there's probably some guy, not, you know, there's probably some guy sitting somewhere super out of shape, uh, smoking a pack of cigarettes a day, not eating clean, not reading books, 
and and having some success. You know, maybe he got a lot of money, got some stuff popping in his business, but who knows what's going on in his marriage? Who knows what's going on with how that'll affect his children as they come up? And who knows how long that person's going to live? And mm -hmm. maybe if all of those things do end up happening, man ends up with a good relationship with his with his family, lives to 80 years old, runs a successful business, does it all while being physically and mentally out of shape, you know, somehow. Let's say that happens. That 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 may be one out of a thousand. Okay. That's what I was about to say. We got to play the odds in our favor. Okay. And so do you want a one out of a thousand chance or do you want a, a 80% chance? And so, you know, you, you alluded to the lot, a lot of the successful people that you've studied and researched all have some, you know, this routine in the morning, you know, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of people, and even goes back to the old school, early to bed, early to rise, makes one healthy, wealthy and wise. So I'm like, damn, I want all three of those. I'd like to be wise. I'd like to be healthy. And I for sure would like to be wealthy. And so th this is where it starts. Early to bed, early to rise makes one healthy, wealthy, and wise. You got to look at the odds of the majority of people that are having high levels of success and that are serving high levels of people. And a lot of people, nine times out of ten, they're going to tell you they have a morning routine as we as as we talk about this i could think of tons of people that i know that are super successful that have one from you to jim trestle to marcus smith to myself to so many other people and i cannot think of a lot of people that are having major levels of success that don't do these things but i can think of maybe one or two out of all the people that i know and i hope that isn't what people are are banking on that they're playing the odds of this is what a lot of the, the the successful people do. So, me specifically, something that has helped me that I think can help the the the, the listeners and, and the viewers from waking up and sleeping. So I, I get a I get people a lot that have a hard time sleeping. You know they they can't get to bed. You know they say they they, they can't go to bed. You know before ten o'clock. Here's a couple things that has helped me transition over to that because I used to be a night owl too. And so uh, one thing is is the uh, CBD, you know, that 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 uh, I take and, and, and we take uh, at night. And, and that's, you know, that's something we've been talking about for a while that, you know, I really didn't want to expose people to on our show because I didn't want it to be about, oh, here they go. They're trying to push products, you know, to, to, to people. Um, but I know that it's been making a difference in in my life and so at some point we may need to let people know about it because off the mic when people ask me this is what i'm pointing them to and so the cbd at night has helped me uh to relax and sleep um i also take magnesium and magnesium mm -hmm. is a natural muscle relaxer and so that will also naturally uh re relax you and I'm not doing stressful things at the latter half of my day that's going to get my mind racing that last hour of the day. So I'm not trying to engage in stressful conversations or things that get my mind racing at the end of the night. And then it's going to take you time to get used to that routine. So you can't expect yourself to go from being out of shape to running five miles tomorrow. But you can start the process and it won't take you that long. And so if it don't happen for you in the first three days, four days, five days, it may take you a month to get on the routine of, all right, take your butt to bed. If it takes you an hour to fall asleep, get in bed at nine, nine thirty, so you know you can be sleeping by ten thirty. And so those are one of the that's one of the things. And then when I wake up in the morning, um, I try to drink at least sixteen ounces of water uh, as soon as I get up because your body's dehydrated after sleeping all night long and not getting any fluids you know pumped into it and so your body's thirsty and so i start out the morning and i'm pumping 16 ounces of water minimum into my body and uh and, and i'm taking probiotics uh uh on an empty stomach 
And so I take a, a probiotic on, on an empty stomach. And this has been one of the major things. I used to have acid reflux. So I remember I used to uh, heartburn and all of that stuff. And to be honest, I think the heartburn stuff started from um, me entertaining people. And instead of me going from having a couple of drinks uh, one day a week, I probably edged into three days a week of having multiple uh cocktails and then also the smoking you know cigars and and stuff which is something else that i like to do smoke cigars and so i noticed that i started to get these issues and i started to get on nexium so i had to take the purple pills anytime i start needing to take pills i freak out so it's like oh this ain't the way i'm about to go like i ain't built for getting on this big path of 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 needing medication Unless it's like there's no way naturally to get over this stuff. So I started to drink more water. I started to take probiotics first thing in the morning. And I cut back those things in half. Um, I'm not going to say I don't drink, but I, you know, I don't drink as much. And I'm responsible about it when I'm doing it. And I'm not smoking cigars, you know, two, three days a week. I may have one or two per month as a treat. And... The probiotics and the drinking of the water, cutting back on, on these things, uh, I feel has t it's taken it away. So I don't have any pills that I'm taking, any medication for this stuff. And I went damn near a year of, of, of feeling like I had to take these uh, these pills. And so I would like to encourage people out there, you know, in the, in the morning. Um, another thing that used to cause that, I think, is I used to think I had to have this big breakfast before I worked out to build muscle. And so... If, if I started working out at seven and uh, or at six and I would try to stuff myself full of like a protein shake or some eggs and oats, you know, a half hour before I worked out or 45 minutes and my, my body wasn't digesting it. And then I was working out on top of that. I'm stuffing a pre-workout down my throat, you know, in the morning. And these are things that I've watched, not just myself, but a lot of people have. And so those would be a couple tips that I would give you. Uh, on on health and, and nutrition and and hydration you know look at your body research the body and the human body and your brain how much of your brain how much of our body is reliant upon and made up of of water and if you're not giving yourself that water and hydrating yourself then it's not going to be as clear you're not going to think as clear uh, another mistake i used to make is too much caffeine i was cramping up uh, a lot and I couldn't understand why, because I was drinking a lot of water. So I was drinking a lot of water, but I was taking pre-workout. And I was looking at my pre-workout, and the pre-workout that I was taking was 300 milligrams of caffeine. And then <laughs> later on, you know, in the morning, you know, I would do that. And then later on in the day, Starbucks. I would still have one cup of coffee. You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, I know you like, to, you like to pump four or five shots of espresso. You know what I'm saying? You still doing the four shots of espresso? No, I had to. Uh, I had to. I had to wean it back. I was gonna say something in regards to what you said earlier about the sleep. I think sleep is underrated for people. Yes. Uh, I, I think, and I don't know. Um, I'll go back then. I come to the coffee. I think the first thing I wanted to say to emphasize it because I used to neglect it is sleep. I think sleep and allowing your body just to rest and heal itself and, and be in a great pattern. Um, I think also by structuring your day and scheduling your day and making sure that you're giving all to your day, that will basically allow you to go to sleep. I think a lot of people are up at night um, because they haven't exhausted themselves through the day. You know what I'm saying? They haven't kicked their own ass. And they haven't exhausted said, themselves. You can't sleep because no. you haven't pushed yourself hard enough. No, they, 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 they waffle through the day or uh, they think about things that they should be doing. They dream. They uh, think I'd about love to take some of do. these cats that can't sleep on the road with me on the ground for three days and see if they still can't sleep at the yeah, end of the night. Ass kicked. Yeah. Just, be, yeah. just being serious, they get their ass kicked. And, and, I, and, and I say that because I want that to be a personal challenge to somebody of learning to kick your own ass and learning to put yourself in, 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 in some of the, um, um, you know, most extreme situations that cause you to give all your energy, you know what I'm saying? And that, those are some of the things that 
I'm like 10 o'clock, 10.30, I'm crawling to the bed like, yo, I got to get me some fucking sleep and I got to make sure I have enough sleep before, you know, five comes around. Uh, but then also, I think that you uh, you said it the best, hydration. You know, like getting your body into a sleep rhythm, getting your body into a, um, a, a use the bathroom rhythm, r- rhythm, releasing toxins from your body and just getting into healthy patterns is the is the ultimate it's the ultimate everything, man. And I think we can take this back to the first part of the conversation. It's about being well. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and, I, and if I got to say... And it affects your performance. Want... It affects... Yes. This, is, this is ring at home. We ain't just out here talking bullshit about nutrition for no reason. This whole thing goes back to affecting you at home, being a better dad, yes. parent, brother, sister, friend, whatever. And in in your chosen endeavor, whether it's business sports whatever it is you're going to be better more aware more alert able to go longer faster stronger harder if you're doing some of the things that we're talking about i tell you this too uh and now that i've reached you know just i've gotten down the proverbial uh monopoly board in business and i've met people who've been uh successful but out of shape right and i'll be lying if I said that I didn't have conversation and these people want to be in better shape, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of these people, you know, they grew up in a different era where fitness wasn't as important or you didn't have as much information, you know what I'm saying? And we grew up, you know, I'm 35. We grew up in that, that, that mafia area where, Hey, I'm a boss. I'm big. I'm heavy. And, you know, I'm in charge. Yeah. yeah, That that shit doesn't exist no more. You know what I'm saying? The people who, who come from our generation and younger, People want to be in shape. People want to, they want to look good. They want to feel good. They want to, you know, that that's all part of it. And so, you know, understanding the importance of wanting to be around for your kids or, or, or when we talked about it with inflammation, not wanting your fucking organs to have to be working overtime because you're eating too much or you're drinking too much. All that shit is important, man. You know what I'm saying? And, and putting yourself in a position to be preventative and, and sort of, um, be on the front side of not allowing that that overweight frame or uh, just a reckless um, just a reckless lifestyle. You don't want to be in that situation and be in somebody's hospital or not being able to perform at your highest level uh, because you know if either things you're ingesting, about, or things how, that you're drinking, or drugging, this? or whatever it may be. How about this? You know, I don't know about you, but specifically on my end, uh, I try to hire athletes. I love hiring athletes. Uh, athletes seem in my business to perform better. They fit right into what it is that we do. Former athletes, even if they're 45 years old, if they were former athletes, those people tend to, to, to click more with what it is that it takes to be successful in this game over here. And two things about that. One, if you're trying to attract athletes and you're not doing athletic things or looking athletic, it's going to be difficult for you to attract those people, like attracts the light. So it'll affect you in your hiring. Because people are like, well, if this is the outcome of what I'm going to look like at 40, like, I don't want that. If this is what this person, now, if they see you on the flip side, living a healthy life, they like, man, this dude 36 years old, looking like he's 25, that's what I want. Still running and gunning, like, that's, that's what I want. So you attract those people, but... Just like we've talked about people that have a hard time transitioning after the NFL or after playing major college football and they played sports their whole life and now it's like, oh shit, what am I going to do now when I grow up? Like now my plan was like to be an athlete my whole life. Now what am I going to do? And so people start drinking and drugging and getting depressed and literally kill themselves (laughs) over stuff like this. I think the same thing happens to people that maybe never thought they were going to make it big in the NFL but just never knew how important their whole life they've been training. They've been training in high school. They've been training in college. They've been training in grade school, working out, practice, playing playing a sport, playing two sports, preparing. They didn't notice the positive things that was happening from their mind from doing these things. And now they get into a business situation. Maybe they're a couple years out and they stop exercising and they stop doing things they've done for the last 20 years of their life and they wonder why their mood has changed and they're sad and they're down and they're not happy and they can't deal with stress and they're depressed so they're not having success in a business venture because of of these things. And I don't think people realize how much of it is, is attached to, they were just used to releasing endorphins yes. and, and, and getting themselves in that space that 
their their mental wiring is connected to if I'm going to be my best, I need to be training hard. I need to be pushing for something. I need to be training for something. And when they stop doing that, they're not playing their best in business because they're not releasing those endorphins and they're out of what they've done their entire life. Yeah, I'll say just to even to build on that, man, just having the ability to, and I keep on saying to kick your ass, and having that energy to um, persist and push and move forward, all that shit comes from working out. And that mentality is developed when you push it on the treadmill, you push it on the track, you push in the weights, you're, you, and you're doing a bunch of shit when you don't feel like doing it. And that's what kind of helps to get you there, keep you there, and to stay there. And I don't, I don't know. I, I put like this, this it, and if, if you go back to the start, you know, I think about it, right? When you're a kid, they put you in, you know, PE gym class every day or, or a few times a week, and they put you in the classroom. And from an elementary level, we understand the balance of that. You know, what I'm saying where you have to get the kid and move them around inside of the gym. You got to get the kid outside to get some recreation, and then we have to put you in the classroom. And so when you think about it, you've been conditioned like that from, you know, when do you start going to school? Five to 18, you know what I'm saying? And then somewhere along the way, um, we we tend to think that that's not a thing or that's not important to basically work all parts of your body. But you have to think about it like this. At some point, uh, there was a bunch of people who sat down and said, okay, what makes it uh, uh, an individual well, right? And even if they're not playing um, basketball or football, can we put Just them in like when you go to rehabil athletic? rehabilitation. You know, when people rehab from uh, addiction issues, you know, one of the things that they Everything. typically have is some form of mind, body, spirit. A hundred percent. Listen to me. You're lifting weights, you're working out, you're working on your spirit, and you're working on what you're working on at that, that, that certain period of time. And I don't know, talking to, I guess, talking to two uh, ex-athletes, it's, um, it's very easy to, 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 to push the, 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 uh, the importance of doing something physical, you know, to, 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 put your, to put your spirit or your body in a better position. But just for your everyday joker, you know what I'm saying, you know, getting over to Planet Fitness, getting to LA Fitness, getting to Lifetime Fitness. How do they do uh, it? How do you suggest it? You know, let, let's say I'm listening in and I'm like, man, I want to do this stuff. I, I know it's something that I need to do, but I haven't made the transformation yet. What would you suggest in from, from a steps to mindset to how do they do it? Simple, man. Get you a ten dollar membership at Planet Fitness. Uh, get you uh, a, a, like just get you a committed time you can wake up, right? So even if you're waking up at seven thirty, you have to be to work at nine. Just say, okay, let me try this deal for a couple weeks. You know, let me get up at six and make sure. Uh, no, let, let me get up at if I have to be to work at nine. Let me get up at you know five fifty. Get in the gym from six to seven. And then from there, uh, I'm able to be on the right track. You know what I'm saying? And then from there, uh, you know, I've, I've listened to Simon and Maurice podcast. There's enough inside the catalog where you can go. You can listen, listen to episode one to where you at now. Uh, you can get to the gym. You can put the stuff in your ears, get you some music that's encouraging, uplifting, and kind of get your spirit going. And even if you don't want to hit the weights, they have a space inside of Planet Fitness where you can run a circuit, right? You can go run a circuit for 30 minutes, work your whole body out, 45 minutes, work your whole body out, and get out. And the important thing to do would be to measure how you felt or just how your day goes as you as you as you start this process. And without with out of doubt, I would we I would be willing to bet every dollar in my pocket that a person couldn't deny that they felt better, their attitude was better, and before they go, have the intention of saying, "Okay, how like to predict how do I want to feel? Like tell yourself, I want to feel great while I'm doing this. I want to come to work and I want to be the better attitude when I step into a room. I want to have I want to be the person that drives the conversation that I want to be around. You know what I'm saying? I want to be happy, joyful, excited, enthusiastic. And I promise you, if you go into rooms like that and be the enthusiastic one, you have the right energy, and you've sweated, you've showered up, and you've done more than your peers. Uh, have done at that hour, I promise you, you feel better. And then you start to say, okay, well, how can I compound this, right? And you compound that and you get an extended period of time of just feeling better. And then at times, like we've talked about, when you don't when you don't get up and get in there, you'll feel the difference, you know what I'm saying? And then maybe this becomes a part of your new life, but I don't give a shit who you are. You're not going to be able to break into a different stratosphere of living 
if you don't just change the basic top part of your day. You know what I'm saying? But these are practical steps that everybody can do. And a lot of this shit just comes down to personal effort. You know what I'm saying? This is this is discipline like, and planning. This, it's discipline planning, planning like you said all right well if you got to be in a gym it's if you got to be at work at nine you be in a gym from six to seven get up at five fifty. you know it's like people don't yeah. put in that effort of okay i work backwards with that first part of my day so it's like all right what time do we start the podcast what time do we start taping today 7 30 7 30 a.m so we was already in yeah. the office like we already ready to rock and roll people didn't even get up yet and so i yeah. rewinded all of that and i'm like all right I got to start training. I, I did wrestling today from six to seven. So I knew I had to cut it off at seven because so I wanted shower to, up. Yep. And, and we pray and stretch. And then I had to shower up and be ready to rock and roll and be up here. So if I had to start at six, what time did I need to get up? So I knew, I, I know what time I had to start warming up, what time I, how long it takes me to drive over here. And so I rewinded the tape. I had to be up at 450 AM today in order to make all of those things happen and so i think to the listener you got to start that day off what time do i want that day to really kick off and then work backwards on what time do i got to wake up how long is it going to take me to drive there how long is it going to take me to work out how long is it going to take me to shower and get dressed and map it all out and plan it all out and then cut the shit out with the excuses cut the shit out with the excuses because if you don't do it now number one you're losing money I guarantee you're losing money. I guarantee you're losing, if you're in business, you're losing things that you would be gaining by not doing this. And then in the future, if you don't take care of yourself now, you're going to be forced down the road to take care of yourself when it's, when it's too late or things are, or things are busted out and, and, and busted down. Have the discipline right now to cut the excuses. Somebody's out there doing it with the same hand that you've already been dealt. And so be one of those people. Don't be the person that's sitting there saying, I don't have time or I'm tired. You know, when, when, when you're breaking into this thing, into this routine, when you can drink some pre-workout in the morning, like I remember when I would have a hard time getting going some mornings, I'm thinking, okay, if I could just get to the pre-workout. And when I talked about the, the over caffeine thing, I cut the milligrams down to a pre-workout that was more, um, that had less caffeine. It only has 100 milligrams of caffeine. So I went from 300 to 100, and then I stopped even really drinking that cup of coffee. I started doing green tea, if that, down the road, and I'm not cramping. I'm not having calf cramps. I'm not having the cramps that I was having, things of that nature. But if I would get to the pre-workout, if I was a little groggy, and I know when I take that, I feel like Superman. I'm ready to, I'm ready to rock and roll. So you may need a pre-workout that, that you get up in the morning and you're like, all right, if I'm starting at 6, I got to take this pre-workout by 5.15. You know if you open, open up your eyelids at 5, if you could just make it to the pre-workout, you're going you're gonna to have a jolt you know, for, for yourself. And so you know, in, in closing, and we could talk about this all day. I didn't realize how passionate we were going to be on this. We probably need a part two. There's things I didn't cover that I still wanted to cover as far as uh, stretching, the importance of, of warming up, and uh, cooling down and stretching as you get into your 30s and, and stuff that I've, uh, chiropractic care, um, stem cell stuff that I've been able to do with my, with my body, uh, um, NAD drips, you know, that I'm doing right hey, now. Know, well, I'm telling you, we, we should make a part two of it, you know, but this is just, this is just an extended version of wellness, you know what I'm saying? Just being well, being healthy and being, you know, just being who you are. Amen. Commit to that mind, body, spirit, and it's going to help you get to where you want to be. Thanks for joining us on another epi episode of Street Sports and Success with Simon and Maurice. Let's get it.